All right. Can't see you. You can't see me? Turn the back again. Can you see me now? You said what? Can you see me now? Yes. Okay. Cool. Let's wait a few more minutes to see if anyone else wants to join okay. before we get started. Yeah. So, all right. We got it. What is this hand? Oh, oh. He was, oh I thought he was just like. So how was y'all, you guys, this weekend? Great. Oh, we have someone who joined. Hi. Hi. Nisha P. So, yeah, let, we can wait, like, maybe two more minutes and then get started. And then when we're done, I'll be able to send you guys the recording. Okay. And I can, it'll save on my page for, I guess, like 10 hours or so. So it, but she'll have like a, I think it's an MLV file of the actual recording of the live. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so you can take that and do what you wish. Hi, welcome. Welcome. 10 aces. Okay. All right, we can go ahead and get started and then people can watch whatever part they miss. Okay. Um. Afterward, this will be posted afterward. But hey, you guys. Um. <laughs> I well, I'm let me introduce myself because I feel like some people who are on here I don't personally know you all. So I'm Angel Mills. Um. I have my own business, Angel Mills Brand Strategy, where I do marketing brand st brand strategy and basically work with brands to help find their unique voice. And I'm particularly interested in working with cause oriented brands. So. What brings me here today is um, I've known Kristen for a very long time. We went to college together. We went to Howard. We were we met in the first year, first day of school in the dorm. And we've just known each other for a very long time. And Kristen and her husband, so Kristen Tellis Quay and her husband, Benjamin Quay, they started a business together, Certified Africa. And the two of them are both entrepreneurs. And Benjamin is also a motivational speaker. Kristen is also an attorney. So they have a lot of things going on. <laughs> but um, they have some great businesses that they're working on, one of them being Certified Africa. And then I'll let Kristen talk a little bit about her other venture that she's working on um, launching later this year. And I, before we get to that, though, I want to give you guys an opportunity. Is there anything else you want to add about yourselves? Anything I missed in my little introduction of you two? Feel free. Yeah. I think you. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, you you did a good job at that. I mean, we just love entrepreneurship, which is I think is very crucial to us. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so that kind of captures everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. So today we're gonna be speaking about their business, of course, Certified Africa. Before we get into that, I have to ask Kristen to give her little background story. They have to give the two of them need to give me their love story because it's a beautiful Ghanaian love story. So <laughs> how about we have Kristen start? Why don't you share? Um, about your first time visiting Ghana and kind of where you are now and how do we get here to Certified Africa? Okay, so I'll just give a little a little overview. So Certified Africa is a travel company that is influencing travelers of color to do business on the continent and share their entrepreneurial talents while contributing to the development of the continent. And so it's interesting how the company came to be because it's really centered around our love story and how we met. So it's not by accident that we met. It's a pretty, you know, unique and almost bizarre story. But basically, in 2016, I traveled to Ghana for a uh, study abroad program. And me was actually the, um, the assistant to the program. Me is his Ghanaian name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Benjamin is a slave name, y'all. Yes. <laughs> So he was the assistant to the program, and we really got a chance to connect. And, um, you know, our, our love story kind of grew from there. And while I was there, I really got a chance to dive deep into the culture. You know, I would spend time with his family, with his church, mm -hmm. and really just opened my eyes up to this beautiful 
country they were extremely welcoming to me like I wanted to learn the language and I just really wanted to be immersed and I was blessed with that opportunity to do that by meeting him and um you know I did a lot of traveling I also told him I wanted to travel and see Ghana and you know he was able to to, to show me and give me that experience and by the end of um by the end of my ten time weeks. in yeah by the end of 10 weeks that I was in Ghana you know, I really thought, wow, this is beautiful. This was an amazing experience that I had. I want to be able to go back and show, you know, people in the U.S. and the Caribbean, mm -hmm. people of the diaspora, you know, that same experience that I had. And so we started thinking about, you know, what would it look like for us to start a travel company and what would be our unique niche that we can, or niche that we could, you know, really um, pick up on. And so I'll let Benjamin um, kind of, come in on that on that end yeah so i mean I, I like to feel a little bit free and then speak freely so mm -hmm. yeah um so let me just talk about the meeting point okay the meeting point i don't know if she told the love story very well she just kind of did a brush up <laughs> yeah let me let me just trying to focus on the business <laughs> aspect <laughs> Come again. What did she say? She was trying to focus on the business aspect. She was trying to get to the business point. But you give us the details. What details did she miss? I, I, I get your point in terms of the, the what do you call it, um, the business aspect. We'll deal uh -huh. with that. Now, yes. now, like she said, she came, I mean, she came to Ghana in 2016, okay? She came on a study abroad program, <laughs> which, like she said, I was a, kind of the assistant on the program. Now, in the course of the, the, the program, we got connected. Now, the second day, okay, the second day, mm -hmm. I, I, I just want to, it's funny how people get together. On the second day, we went out that evening, we went out, and whilst we were, were out, for some reasons, I don't know, I just went into her ears and I said, like, I'm going to marry you. <laughs> like, I just said that. <laughs> she thought I was drunk, actually. She threw out the stage, she was like, no, come on, you were drunk. I don't know what came over me to say that. But, I mean, some years down the line, here we are together. We're actually married. So things do happen. Okay, that was yes. just one, one highlight. In that. So subsequently, we got together. She stayed in Ghana after her program for 10 weeks. I showed her around. The amazing thing is that at the end of the 10 weeks, her parents came around as well mm -hmm. for 10 days. So together, we planned something for them, okay, to give them an experience of the country, Ghana. And we did a good job. At the end of the trip, before they left, trust me, they couldn't stop talking about it. Even whilst they were in Ghana, they were telling people and the, their, their family about the experience they've had in Ghana. Even right, how much they, they enjoyed left. themselves. Exactly. In fact, yeah. when she was leaving, she was crying. I don't know why, whether it was me or... Right, how, why would she I'm not be crying? Sure. Was everything. <laughs> I'm not too sure why. But, but yes, they had such a great experience. So when they left, they could not stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. So now we got thinking, even before they left, that look, what can we do to give other people that same experience that they have or that they had that they could not stop talking about? And that we started thinking about possibly a travel company. Before, we are just looking at doing something for family. Okay? Right. But then we decided, look, let's take this beyond family. Because there are a lot of, there are millions of people, black people in America and other parts of, of, of the diaspora that would love to have such an experience. And mm -hmm. why not give it a chance in the business sense mm -hmm. to get people to come? And yes, we formed Certified Africa. I remember how we came about the name. We were once going for walking, we were kind of exercising. We are just thinking about names and she came out. I mean, why not come up with a name like Certified that talks about the fact that, okay, Africa is kind of, it's confirmed, like it's authentic, it's certified. And I said, good, yeah. if we have Certified, let's add Africa to it. We came up with Certified Africa. She designed Ooh, the logo, yes. and here we are. Yes. Now, the business aspect of Certified Africa, which when we came up with the idea of you know the travel company, I told her that look, coming from Ghana and the, the government space which I used to work in, I I happen to be privy to a lot of meetings, and in these meetings you hardly find people of color from outside from the diaspora on these meetings, and these are business meetings. These are meetings dealing with people who want to do business in Ghana, who want to either invest, you know, have some kind of partnership, and you hardly find black people. So I was like, no, this is a concern for me. Africa has a lot of things that you can actually explore, okay, that you can explore. But if we have people 
who do not look like us only taking advantage of that. No, that's bad. So look, in as much as we want to bring people to the continent, to see the beauty of the continent, connect to their roots and have the authentic experience and all of that, let's constantly make sure that we attach an aspect that introduces these people to the various opportunities they can get involved in on the continent. Mm -hmm. Because nobody can develop Africa better than black people. That I can tell you that. So I felt like, look, we can't have certified Africa without business. So we're saying, look, come and have fun. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Come and experience culture. Come and connect your roots. But at least let's introduce you to something that will make you have a stake in the continent. So that's the embodiment of certified Africa. And that's how we, we, we decided to move back. So we are not taking your fun away from you. Yeah. We're keeping your fun. <laughs> but beyond your fun, we are adding something of value right. to it. Yes. So that's basically certified Africa and what we stand for. Nice. So I do want to add, I realized in the introduction, I didn't mention that Kristen and Benjamin are located in Miami, Florida, and I'm in um, Atlanta, Georgia. So yes. we're having a two, we're in two different states right now. Um, and I think Miami is a great place for you guys to launch this business. And kind of speaking on Benjamin, what you were talking about, one thing that is unique about Certified Africa is there that there is this business aspect that you're inviting this atmosphere of fun and travel and culture and maybe even love, you know, if you meet somebody. But <laughs> you're yeah, also exactly. encouraging um, people who are coming on the trip which I think a lot of black millennials are definitely part of your target audience of people that you're introducing this opportunity mm -hmm. to. Um, you're trying to introduce them to business opportunities, entrepreneurial opportunities. Yeah. And I want to know how are, how exactly are you going to do that? And then also, why do you think it's super important for black Americans, black people across the diaspora to be involved in business ventures on the continent? You know, like I mentioned in the introductory past, now Africa is a continent for black people. Let's get that outright. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look back at where we are coming from, in the people in the black people in the diaspora, we are all coming from Africa, basically. Mm -hmm. So now, if we're coming from Africa, there's nothing should stop us from going back to where we are coming from. It may take years. I mean, our forefathers, when they were leaving the continent, they didn't know whether or not they could have a chance mm -hmm. to come back. Okay, mm -hmm. but today we now have an opportunity due to globalization and other things. The world is not a small place. You can easily move back and forth. Okay, so now for black people, I feel like Africa has things that needs to be dealt with. No, no two ways about that in terms of development. Mm -hmm. Now, and we all know that if there's a place where there's a need for people to solve problems, it means there's an opportunity for people to not only solve problems but also create some form of wealth or that's right. like an opportunity for them now Absolutely. if it's somebody who is not african or does not have african descent and the person is trying to venture into africa then you can start thinking about exploitation mm. and if it's somebody that has an african connection it won't be because these are our people and we want to ensure that the place develops are, are you get to my point so which better people to do that than black people now millennials did you ask about millennials? Did you mention something? I about know part of kind of specifically focusing on millennials. I know that that's definitely a big audience that you guys are focusing on, as yeah. well as other people as well. But I think a lot of our audience do fit into the the black millennial. Exactly. Category. Now let me yeah. touch on the the idea of millennials and give you some few examples of people who are doing such things. Now millennials are virtually young people right now who will be eventually growing to become stakeholders in various mm -hmm. fields. Now, looking at the kind of things, opportunities that Africa presents that people can get involved in, if you're able to come to the continent as a millennial today and establish a kind of relationship, business relationship for the future, in 10 years, 20 years time, when you're now old, you would have established something bigger than yourself on the continent, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if somebody who is 50 years already, maybe they don't have too much time to do a lot, but you as a young person, you have a lot of room and space to be able to start something now that will grow and in 10, 20 years time, it becomes something very huge. Now, there's a gentleman mm -hmm. in America, there's a black young guy in America who took a visit to Senegal. Now, he just visited like other people visited the continent. But when he visited, he, he, he was more entrepreneurial in nature. So he, he was going beyond the fun, which is what we are trying to advocate. Okay, so he now made some connections with some people in Senegal. And he realized that 
as an IT expert that he is, as a young man in the U.S. Now, there are, there are not too many of such avenues in Senegal. So what can he do to contribute to the continent? He set up an IT company. Now, when we say setting up an IT company, sometimes people look at some building, having a building and all of that. No, it's just about finding how to register your company, and that's it. Now, Frank. he registered the company, exactly. It's as simple as that. He got other people from Senegal who were also interested in that field. Now, he trained them because he was more experienced. He trained them. That guy's company is now growing in Senegal. He has employed people. He's now meeting the need of IT in Senegal. He is thinking of expanding. We met him a few months back. He's thinking of expanding into other parts of the region. That's a young person that has established something. Maybe today it's not too big. But in 10, 20 years' time, when that gentleman moved from being a millennial to whatever age he may be, 50-something, he has established something bigger than himself that is helping the continent and is helping himself. Now, this right. same gentleman, this same gentleman has actually extended into farming in Senegal. He set up a farm, have other people in Senegal, support him with that. Now, mind you, he's not living in Senegal. No, he's living in the U.S. He goes to Senegal because don't forget, like I said, the world is now a global village. You can move around at any time. This is a young man who's building generational wealth for himself and his family. At the same time, he's making a huge contribution to the continent, a lasting one. And these things that he started are going to grow. You, you, you get my point? So it's very crucial for young people in America, black people, to try their best to come to the continent, not only to have fun, which is good. You can take just one day out of your trip and make certain connections. And we're certified after what we're trying to do is to create that avenue for you. So you don't have to go searching for it. We'll bring you in contact with the people that are doing stuff. Let me give you another example. There's a gentleman I met, okay, who wanted to go into mushroom business in, in Ghana. Now, he went to South mm -hmm. Africa and went to Ghana, but he fell in love with Ghana, okay? So he wanted to go into that business in Ghana. I connected him to somebody who was already into mushroom business, meaning he doesn't have to start anything from scratch. This is a young man in his 30s. Right. He makes okay. contact with this guy. All he did was to put some monies, because he has a resource, put some monies into this guy's mushroom business. They created a partnership. Now the mushroom is growing. And Ghana imports a lot of mushrooms. So if you have people producing in-house, that's a big deal. So that's how a black person, an African-American actually, is making a huge contribution in the continent. And that's what we want other people to also do, basically. Mm -hmm. So I, I would like to just jump in. So I think that, you know, what really embodies the spirit of, of the, the trips that we're doing this year and how we're, you know, bringing this, uh, bringing this experience of what we want to do through travel, through the mode of travel, is really like facilitating that collaboration. So when you come on the, the experience, you really get a chance to connect to other millennials and people who are doing things already on back in the U.S., influencers, creators. They may have their own fashion business. They may have their own, um, I'm trying to think. They may, there may be into culinary arts. They may be doing mm -hmm. something in tech or finances and you know the opportunity to come on this trip really gives you that chance to connect with them and find out you know what are they doing what am i doing how can we collaborate and solve other problems on the continent and it and it really facilitates um the ability to be on a trip with someone who has the same interests as you and it kind of you know is that seed the planting of that seed for something to grow past that so you know when the trip is over you know, you have that opportunity to say, okay, well, I was in Ghana and I met this person who started their own um, hotel or they started their own restaurant or they started their own um, fashion strategy. fashion boutique or they started their, they want to do publicity or brand strategy for, um, you know, African-Americans who are moving to Ghana and helping them put the, push their brand out um, to an African audience. There's so many different things you can do. And when you have, you know, creatives and um, young people in the same room on that type of trip and experience, you really get a chance to, um, you know, to have some unique things that come out of it. So our trips are really centered around the ability to collaborate, for you to meet other young people who are doing exciting things on the continent and, um, you know, for you to for you to make something out of it. So we'll have some sessions that will allow you to hear about people who have moved to the continent, what they're doing now, people who travel back and forth. Um, you know, and it's not just it's not just African Americans, it's people all of the diaspora. So like my husband now is now someone who is of the diaspora. And when he goes back, he would be considered a returnee. 
and he can now contribute as a returnee. So there's, you know, <laughs> what, what did you say, then? He said he's an advocate, so he said he's not a returnee. But okay, I mean, yeah, he there, are, there are people who, to that. <laughs> you know, there are people who either, you know, are African. They, there's no, there's no doubt about the fact that they have African roots, but they were raised here, and they have the ability now to go back and connect with other people who are interested in doing that on the continent. As yeah, well. Angel, let me so, add just one thing, okay? Now, yeah. I just wanted to say sometimes a lot of people think it's complicated in terms of the business aspect, but I just want people to understand it's not. Like, it's not that complicated. If you just follow a few steps, you'll be fine. You know, I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah. And so, you know, one thing that, that also happened, so after the trip, after we have these experiences, you get a chance to meet people and see all of the different things that they're doing and the ways that they're contributing to the continent. You have your fun, you make your relationships, you connect with the people, you know, that we are um, facilitating during the experience. If you identify something that you want to get involved in, you know, we do have an opportunity to do consulting to help you get to that next step, to find the right people to make that um, make that happen for you. So, so the consulting is you're kind of helping to facilitate the relationships that when people return from the trip, mm -hmm. you're helping to facilitate relationships with and other execution. people who are in Ghana who yes. have the same interests or could assist them with the business venture that they're interested in. Yes. yes. So, so That's for awesome. instance, Certified Africa have a consultancy in Ghana. Okay. So, for mm -hmm. instance, if if Jamel's strategies, Brandon strategy wants to establish in Ghana, start something in Ghana. Now, beyond your trip, we cannot help you to see how you can get involved in the country after your trip. And if, if you are not able to even make any personal connection, you can decide to come through us, our consultancy, to make that easy. And we have people on the ground who are doing that work. So, yes, it's it's very possible. Awesome. So something you mentioned um, a little while ago, Ben, is you were speaking about, you touched a little bit on like exploitation and a lot of businesses and things are happening in Ghana and on the continent, but from people who are not of the diaspora who are starting these businesses. So mm -hmm. for folks who are part of the diaspora but want to start businesses in Ghana, how can they do it and how are you ensuring or encouraging them to do it in such a way that isn't exploiting or depleting resources or talent from the continent but is creating a relationship that's mutually beneficial for individuals and for the economy there as well as for, you know, individuals who are part of the diaspora as well? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, I think it in two ways. Now, first of all, there's no amount of thing you can say to somebody in terms of ensuring that they are not exploiting per se. Okay, mm -hmm. you, can, you can encourage people, but still, if they, are that, if they are of that nature, they may still want to do that. But like I said in the beginning, black people will understand that, look, the people here look more like me. Okay, so the tendency of they trying to exploit them will be very low or less. They, they, it will be more of making a contribution to the continent. Now, let me give you an example of what exploitation will be like. In Ghana, for instance, I've lived there my entire life. Now, in yeah. Ghana, for instance, <laughs> now we have people, let me use, let me say, people from China, okay, from China, coming to, to do mining, because don't forget, Ghana has a lot of gold and bauxite and manganese, a lot of mm -hmm. minerals. Now, they come to Ghana to mine. Now, they meet the chiefs and other stakeholders, and then they get some land in some community. Now, when they start mining, what they do is that they don't use a proper means of mining. They use ways that they can save money. Because in the first place, most of them don't care about the people there. So they now use the, the, the water bodies that these villagers use to wash their gold and other things. When they are done, they take their gold back to China. Why? Because mm -hmm. they don't really care about the people who are there. They've destroyed the water bodies just to be able to get access to that gold. That's exploitation. You don't care about the people, you're only causing harm, okay? But with black people, I don't foresee a lot of exploitation in that respect. I see of a way of making a contribution because we are, I, I feel like, look, these are our people, okay? If Kristen comes to Ghana as an African-American and wants to do something, she will not be coming from a point of, what can I collect and just take away? Like the example I gave you, there's a guy who's doing great things in Senegal. Right. He employed people who are actually making a contribution. So with black people, I don't foresee the exploitation aspect. I see more of making a contribution to a place that you have a connection mm -hmm. to.
Awesome. So we were kind of easing into the conversation, but I definitely want to talk about the trips that you all have coming up. From my understanding, speaking with you all, it's about three trips coming up towards the end of the year. I know each trip has a different theme. Um, some of them may be booked out. Like, let's let's chat about <laughs> <laughs> what's or they're getting booked fast from what I hear from you guys yes. so yeah what what are the upcoming trips that you all have and what can folks expect if they do choose to um come on one of you guys' trips this year okay so we have like you said we do have three trips we have one in August which is centered around um, the Chale Wolte Festival, which is a unique arts and film festival, um, an annual unique arts and film festival that will be happening, you know, exploring culture. And so, you know, the trip attendees will really get a chance to, well, for one, um, and I don't know, we, we didn't mention this yet, but the whole guise of this year has this huge theme of the year of return. Right. And, yeah. Um, you know, the year of return is, is really about commemorating and, and celebrating the return of, um, you know, the, the descendants of enslaved Africans. And it commemorates what's, what's unique about it is it hits the 400 year mark of what would be the arrival of enslaved Africans to the U.S. And, you know, this year is, is significant, one, because of, um, one, because of the amount of years that has passed by, and two, just being able to come back and commemorate, you know, what we once thought would be the last time that we would see the shores of Africa. So that is the guise of this entire year and the theme, but each trip has a unique um, set of festival or things that we will be doing. So, of course, business number one, you'll always get a chance to collaborate and meet other people who um, from the U.S., from the Caribbean, from the U.K., who have moved back and are now doing things on the continent, so we'll have a business session. Um, and for the the August trip, you'll really get a chance to you know do exploration, adventure, um, you know explore Accra, all of that. That will be all included. And for the November trip, the November trip is really you know focused on uh, spiritually connecting back to your roots and really you know this awareness self-awareness who are we mm -hmm. um who are we now after 400 years and figuring out and looking back at the past to figure out where we can move forward in the future and so that's really the theme for november really spiritual experience so if that sounds like you november could be a great great time for you um to go and then for december <laughs> yeah we have we have yes, december, december. Trip, which is really like focused a lot on you know black millennials and it really gives that opportunity for you to have, you know, party and for you to meet other young people, other creatives, other entrepreneurs, other people who are really just making moves on the continent and back, you know, wherever they're, they're coming from. We have people coming from the Caribbean. We have people coming from Canada, um, all over the U.S. And it's going to be an, an exciting time um, for December. You know, we are creating that environment where you can brunch and talk about business, talk about what you're doing, um, you know, in your respective life. And, mm -hmm. you know, the trips are really well thought out about the places that we're going to go on, the experiences. You'll have a chance to, you know, to go on boating adventures. You'll have that chance to... Um, connect with the music, Afrobeats festivals, and really with the December trip, we'll also be doing Afrochella as well. Yes. Um, so, you know. So what is Afrochella for people who don't know what Afrochella um, is? Well, I mean, we don't, speak, we don't want to speak exactly for them, but Afrochella is a, is a, a festival that we will be um, attending as a part of our, as a part of our trip. And, um, you know, I think it's just, it is their third year of doing this, and mm -hmm. it's really gained a lot of traction on um, the continent. And it's been pulling people um, from all over the world. So it's, you know, it's very admirable what they're doing, and we want to take our travelers to, um, to experience that festival. Talk about so, yeah. you know, they'll have a chance to, um, you know, to see um, artists and performers, all of that. So... Yeah, so let me just let me just capture in terms of our three trips or certified Africa, and that's how our trips mm -hmm. definitely will be. You have just let me use three legs, okay? You have connection to your roots, that's culture, the cultural aspect. 
Okay. And Africa, Ghana, especially is a place that you can have a lot of such connection to your roots as a black person who has perhaps never been to the continent. Even if you have been to some parts, you need to come to Ghana because we give you a different kind of connection to, you know, where we're actually coming from as black people. So that's one aspect of all our trips that stands out. Mm -hmm. And the second aspect of our trips has to do with the business aspect because we don't want to bring people to, to black people to Africa just to come and have fun. We always want to add that business component. So even right. if you don't want it, we'll introduce you to it when you take a decision. <laughs> if you don't like it, that's fine. But we'll introduce you to what you can get involved in, mm -hmm. people you can connect with. Those who want to connect, fantastic. Now, and then the final part of our trips is the fun part. We are not taking that away from anybody. We are going to make sure, and I tell people anytime I speak to them about the trip, that look, if your focus is just about fun, you'll get tired of having fun. Because from day one to the end, there's fun throughout. So <laughs> yes. for that aspect, yes. you're going to have it. But like I yeah. said, we always want to add something more than just the fun. Because the fun is an automatic aspect of the trips. You know, so the business aspect yeah. is a value addition that we're adding to all our trips for certified And aspects. business is fun. And I feel like when you're connecting with people and you're talking about business, there is this idea that it's, it's happening in a very conservative, rigid environment. But in reality, yeah. this is an opportunity for folks who are coming on this trip to connect with all of the amazing people that are going to be attending from various parts of the world, but also connect directly with people on the continent in a way that's fun, in a way that's um, cultural, in a way that's relevant to who we are as Black millennials, who we are as Black people. And so I think what you guys exactly. are doing is You know, in, awesome. in the summer, for instance, in the summer, you have a lot of people from the diaspora coming back home. And a lot of them are coming mm -hmm. back, you know, having the thought of doing some form of business in, in, in Ghana or on the continent. So now, when we create such platforms, where it's not a rigid type of wearing suit type, we've come to have some fun. But amidst the fun, we've created an environment where we know that we, are, we, we can talk about something business, some, something, you know, opportunity-wise. Right. So it's not the kind of traditional business setting kind of thing. No, we create a platform where you can, you know, have fun and then share business-wise. But we set the mood for business in that respect. So you know that, look, you need to look out for something. What relationships can I establish with other people? And mind you, Ghana has a lot of people from the diaspora who have moved and are living there already and are doing things. So we're bringing a lot of African-Americans. When, when we go to Ghana in, in any of our trips, we're going to go to a place that has a lot of African-American settlements, okay? People who have moved completely. They only visit America and then go back. We'll meet these people, we'll see how they've established businesses. And some of them established it while they were still in America. And then with time, they moved, they feel like it's okay. And I tell you, people who come on this trip, a lot of them will have the sense of moving to live in Ghana. I can tell you that. <laughs> you, you will love the place. You know, so America will be like another... So that might need to be the next business, helping people move over there who become yeah. Yeah. interested in staying. Maybe I everybody won't be returning home after the trip. trip. They'll just extend yeah. the trip. So... Yeah. Um, for Ben, I have a question specifically for Ben. So, of course, Ben, as you said, you are from Ghana. I think yeah. you can all tell from your beautiful accent. You're from Ghana, born and raised, and you've been in the United States for a couple of years now. Why, what do you think is the perception or would be the perception of trips like this on your community personally, on your friends and your family? How is this perceived by them? Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that Ghana is known for is our hospitality and our friendliness, okay? So I can tell you point blank. I mean, I, in Ghana, I used to do a lot of study abroad programs, okay? I used to be on such programs. And I've encountered a lot of African-Americans who come to Ghana to tour and to study and all of that. And it has never crossed my mind of any form of, okay, who are these people and all of that. I'm always excited to meet these yeah. people who are coming because I feel like I'm meeting somebody like Angel who looks like me but speaks different. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. amazing. So a lot of family and friends, I can tell you, people in Ghana, they actually, they are fascinated that, okay, they are actually people who look like me somewhere else <laughs> that speak differently. It's amazing. So we're always excited to receive people. I get to me. So there's, there's no, not, not, not no, you know, kind of notion, preconceived notion. I hear a lot of things in the media, but I think it's, um, it's, it's, it's the media trying to create all kinds of 
divisions between black people in Africa and black people in the diaspora, which doesn't exist. Because I can tell you that majority of black people in Africa actually love to welcome people back to the country. They're excited when they find themselves around people who are actually coming back, back to the continent. You know, they're excited. So there's no, you know, problem with, 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 with us back home. Yeah. So we are going to transfer into audience questions momentarily. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and start typing them in. Um, while we are waiting for some questions to come in, I will look like somebody's having phone issues. Yeah. But anywho, um, we're going to start transferring the audience questions. So while we're waiting for those to come in, I do want to ask you to why do you or do you clearly if you're doing this trip, you think that Ghana is a great place for entrepreneurship and innovation. And for folks who are from America that will be coming on this trip, why should they consider expanding a business over into Ghana? Or why would Ghana be a better place? place for them to i guess flagship a business as opposed to america like is it an easier climate for innovation is it i mean i think america can be fairly so, easy depending on what you want to do yeah so let me let me try and answer this question this way now for instance you angel what you do now branding mm -hmm. strategies okay now in america i can tell you that millions of people doing the same thing okay doing right. it's not a problem okay it's how you brand yourself but now why not consider another place where there are a lot of amazing people who can patronize whatever you're doing, but then they don't have a lot of what you're doing there. Which better place for you to want to expand to? So when you come to Ghana, for instance, I can tell you point blank that we don't have too many brand strategies necessarily all across Ghana, because Ghana is very huge, not to talk of the African continent. Mm -hmm. So there's space for you to operate. Now, I was listening to, let me check this, and I was listening to Akon the last time, okay, yeah. Akon. <laughs> and Akon is now in Senegal doing a lot of amazing things in energy. And he said something about, about Africa that I thought was quite interesting. He said, Africa is a place that you as a black person can come and then start something from the scratch and build it up into perhaps a Fortune 500 company. Within five years. Within five years. Wow. And I thought it was interesting, and it was true. Because you don't have too many com too much competition. Okay, mm. so whatever it is, that's a very great point. People, that when we think about doing business in Africa, a lot of people start looking at external things. But the first point of contact is yourself. What are you doing in America as a black person that you can extend to the continent? Because I can guarantee you there's a need for it. I can tell you point blank. There's a need for it. You just have to position yourself well. You don't have to live there. Position yourself, look at the climate of the place, and then just move into it. Now, why is Ghana the best, if that's what you asked, right? Why is Ghana the right. We're starting, but we plan, of course. Okay, yeah, we, we're starting from Ghana. We'll expand to other places. But for, for now, why we chose Ghana? You know, of course, I'm from Ghana. Yeah. So I don't think I'm taking this anywhere. It's coming to Ghana. That's, that's the first, first thing. Now, secondly, I've already mentioned that Ghana has a lot of hospitality. We welcome people, you know, that we don't even know. So how much more our own people? Are you, are you okay? So we, we are open. That's one thing you can find about Ghana. People want to see you succeed. Okay? I mean, some people, of course, there are bad people too around. But people like to see people succeed in Ghana. So when you put, when you trust, let's say, angel brand strategy in the hands of somebody in Ghana, I can guarantee you they want to see it succeed. So they have a good name. So they are going to mm -hmm. see to that it succeeds. That's one thing about Ghanaians. We are very peaceful and there's stability in the country. So if you want to get involved with anything business-wise, which better place? Even fun. You want a place that you don't hear any confusion. That's Ghana for you. Okay? Now, another thing, too, is I mentioned earlier that if you talk about culture, now, don't forget, during the transatlantic slave trade, now, Ghana was a place that they built a lot of their huge castles. So everybody that was taken from the, 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 the sub-region, they, they, they had to pass you through Ghana before they take you to the new world. So Ghana is like a place that has that, you know, authentic connection to where all of this started. So if you want to have that experience, I can guarantee you Ghana is a place to start from mm -hmm. before you can think of other places. Africa is a big place. There are a lot of amazing places. I can tell you that. But Ghana mm -hmm. is amazing in that respect as well. And in terms of doing business, Ghana is very good in terms of receiving people. And let me add that Ghana has declared that 
black people in the diaspora, it doesn't matter where you're from, whether your roots say Senegal or wherever, they've opened its doors for people who want to do business in Ghana. Easy okay. access. Yeah. And Ghana, they're not going to chase you with taxes like they do in America. Ooh. Not Say just that again. Ghana, the African <laughs> country. Say so that one not, more time. They are not going to chase you around with taxes like they do in America. So that's an opportunity, an advantage that we have as black people. Okay. Let's, you know, come again. Great economy. Exactly. Great, amazing that's, economy that's in huge. Ghana. And, and, and the world... Deterrent. Yeah. The World Bank, the world Bank ranked Ghana in 2018 as the fastest growing economy. So that's an amazing place, even beyond China and India. So that's an amazing place to do business. And we encourage everybody, take a chance. Take a chance and then come. But go right. Attach mm -hmm. some business to your travel. Go and have all the fun. You know one thing I experienced, okay, in Ghana? When you go to the, 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 the beach in Ghana, which is lovely, there are a lot, a lot of lovely beaches, you find a lot of different people, African-Americans, Chinese people, you know, white people. But, you know, white people are very smart. Let me say that. You find them at the nightclubs. They're having fun. You find them everywhere. But beyond that, you always have at the back of their mind business opportunity, which Certified Africa I've mentioned, we, we like to incorporate that into our things. So right. let's not just have the fun. Let's go, you know, party and all of that. But whilst we are partying, let's, you know, add some form of business That's incentive. Yeah. Okay. So we did get a couple of questions in. I was kind of paying attention while you were speaking. So there were some questions about doing real estate. I think there are some folks who are interested in possibly purchasing real estate over in Ghana and kind of wanted to get some general information about maybe the what types of things I uh, maybe not too in depth because I would assume you're not an expert, but maybe some thoughts you have of how it is for for foreigners to purchase property there and will there be any opportunities during the trips for folks who are interested in real estate to possibly um, speak to someone yeah while they're there yes that's it's something very good it's, a, it's, a, it's an actually very good question now you don't need to be a Ghanaian citizen or whatever to be able to purchase a property in Ghana. You can't. There are ways of going about it. Now, one of the things that we are going to do on this trip is that we have people who are experts in that field, okay? That is going to give people guidance. And don't forget, we also have a consultancy that can help people in terms of going through all the processes. But what I can say right now is that that's a very huge possibility. And it can be that simple to do. It can be that simple. It's not complicated. All you need, have your money, make the move. Find out the processes you need to go through, the permits you need to have, okay? Mm. And then that's it. You purchase your house. It's, it's that simple. And with a few dollars, actually, let me say this. There's a lady we're actually working with, okay? She's coming to Ghana in December. A young woman, a millennial, but she's already had contact with it. She's not been to Ghana, but she's already had contact with people who are from Ghana. And she's falling in love with a country. She wants to purchase a property. Now, Certified Africa, we have a business discovery call before the trip that you can call us and then we'll talk about your business interest. Nice. You know. Okay. And, and she called us, but there's a fee though. There's a little fee. <laughs> <laughs> now, she called us. She told us that she seriously wants a house in Ghana. Now, I spoke to her, gave her all the options there are. In fact, because she paid a fee, of course, I said, I, I, I sent her some properties that are already available. Mm. That if she wants, we already talked about it, how she can go about it. They have, I've connected her to the necessary people. All she needs is to get there. And then she goes to see the property. We start the process. And that's it. She has a property in Ghana. Like I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of African-Americans who are actually living in Ghana. Okay, they have properties all over the place. So that's very easy to do. It's not mm -hmm. that difficult. If you just get the right people to guide you through the process, it's very possible. So I'll add this in. I actually read not too long ago, Airbnb actually listed Ghana as one of the top places that they will start to see more properties um, grow in, specifically wow. in a crop. So, you know, this is something that you can think about doing as a young millennial. Maybe you are interested in venturing into real estate and you've been wanting to purchase your first real estate property and, you know, Property is expensive. Yes, but it will be very a lot challenging. Less expensive 
yeah in ghana and that will allow mm -hmm. you that opportunity to rent out you know rent out the property and bring in some income and do you know and your money will go a long way so these are different ideas that when we when we talk about business opportunities this is there's the world is endless of amounts of opportunities that you can explore and real estate is is awesome so let me give you an an example another example now that's a property i showed to Kristen some few weeks back it's a property in ghana which is being sold and the price of that property which i'm not going to talk about but if you look at America, there's no way you can get any kind of property. Five bedrooms, like five that. bathrooms. Okay, but you have that in Ghana, which you can get with your with your dollars. If you save even for a year, I can tell you, you and Joe, for instance, if mm -hmm. you save for a year with a plan, you can buy an amazing property in Ghana you never thought of having. You don't have to live there 24-7. But anytime you go to Ghana, you live there. If you're not living there, that's Airbnb. And with Airbnb, you don't have to be in Ghana to take your pay. People right. just pay online. Do it online. And you can exactly. hire people in the country to maintain the property Man, yes. for you. That's it. You're, yeah. you're making money. I get to me. So it's very possible. And there are diverse ways of going about it. It's not that complicated. You just have to connect to the right people. That's all. Awesome. So someone asked a while ago about like how open, from what you both are saying, like people are, G Ghanaians specifically, are very open to having folks from the diaspora come in and start businesses there. So I think there was a question regarding just like the openness level. And then maybe I think their question could have also been geared toward like, if you would like to meet other business people in Ghana who are already doing very well, is there opportunity to do that as well on the trip or for you all to connect them later through consulting opportunities? So both um, to your to your 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 latest question, um, we will have several events specifically on the or actually on every trip. But um, for December, we will actually have a networking event, speed networking event, where you'll get a chance. Uh, young millennials who already wow. live in, uh, who are doing stuff, okay. they will have that that chance to to meet them. You know, have that one on one. You know, we'll have um, the opportunity for you to grab a drink, you know, some food. And it really it's really about the environment. It's not your, tra your traditional way of thinking of how you do business. It's how we we as black millennials naturally connect and do business. It's usually like, you know, we're at a party and you're like, OK, what do you do or what do you do? And you, and you find out that, hey, it's you, casual. Yeah, it's very casual. Um, you know, it's not stuffy. So we're recreating that experience and allowing you to to connect and meet with other people. So you'll definitely get that that opportunity. There will be some times where we actually set that up for you. Okay. And then after the trip, if there's anybody that, you know, you want to specifically meet or you want to follow up with, we can we we have the consultancy um, to do that. Yeah. So so I was going to say now we have created a platform for you. Mm -hmm. We've put it together. All you have to do is to just do the talking. Now we have two sessions, okay, in the business aspect. We have one, one aspect where we are doing, we're introducing you to the opportunities in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And the other part, we've created a platform for you to now engage, okay? And that is through a branch, through various networking events. But we have another session as well where we are doing introduction. We're introducing you to, okay, this is what you can do in Ghana. Whether real estate, whether it's energy, whether it's agriculture, mm -hmm. anything, whether it's services, like, like Tech, like this is what's needed, basically. Exactly. This is we're where there's to... opportunity for innovation. Fantastic. That's you know, awesome. And aside that, exactly. Yeah. Beyond that, then you can also now foster your own relationship with the people we've brought together in one in one space to say, okay, we've brought these people together. Let's dialogue. How can we? What do you do? What do I do? You know, like when, it's a networking environment, so you have to connect. And there, there are people who are also doing things on the continent, and you establish relationship, mm -hmm. and that's it. You take it from there. Yeah. Awesome. So if anybody, we are going to wrap up soon. So if anybody has any additional questions that were not covered that they'd like to ask, please go ahead and comment um, while we're waiting for those last few questions. If you guys could let everybody know where they can find you all on Instagram, where they can find you online, how they can um, book the trips and get any information, get in touch with you all. Of course. So you can find us, of course, on Instagram at, at Certified Africa. And you can visit us online at www. 
www.certifiedafrica.com. And so on our website, we actually have links that will take you um, straight to the itinerary, where you can look at the itinerary, the cost of the trip, what's included, what's not included, um, as well as you can book right from that link. So when you go on our website, depending on which trip you'd like to take, uh, you just click on that link and it'll take you straight um, straight there. You can also um, direct message us if you'd like to access any, any other questions and we can send you our number. We can hop on a call if you have any questions specifically about the, tri uh, the trip that wasn't answered today or you just want to you know, have a conversation with us about possible opportunities. Um, we can schedule that as well. And so, you know, we're, we're accessible. You can also, it's Facebook. We're also on Facebook, yes. Certified Africa. So Certified okay. Africa everywhere. The website, Certified Africa, Instagram, Certified Africa, Facebook, Certified Africa. You can find us a lot out of these places. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And we have a few more minutes. So can you guys, for folks who are just joining in, give a brief recap of the focus points for the three trips that are happening later this year? Yeah, so, so three areas, like I mentioned. The roots and culture. We're connecting you to your, back to your roots. And so and that trip I, is in the first trip. The it's in August. In yeah, August. August 22nd to August 29th. Okay. The second trip is in November 3rd to November 12th. And then the final one for the year is in December 27th to 3rd January. And like I was mentioning, these three trips basically has three components. The roots and culture connecting to your roots, also the business aspects, the business opportunities, and then the obvious part, which is the fun aspect, which and is through art, yes. the fun and adventure, which is through art. Yes. Okay, so that you're going, that, that is from day one, you're going to party <laughs> until, I guess you, you get tired, you can't do anymore. Yes, so, so yes. <laughs> I'll so, just add, Accra has an amazing nightlife, um, while I was there, like people are out past four in the morning. Yeah, like there's, you don't sleep there's never, never a dull night, and there will always be something that that you can do. So you know, you don't have to worry about that. And got so that let me add that um, in case that somebody who wants to go on the trip for the December trip is booking very fast. So that's one trip that if you want to book, you want to book early because very soon it will be closing up. We've closed it one time already. But based on some demands, we have to open it up. But I don't think we're doing that anymore. So if somebody wants to book for December, it's close enough. November is also close enough, actually. I can tell you that. Just a, 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 a number of spaces more for, for November, but it's a bit open. August has some spaces in August. So they are booking very fast. So if you want to jump on any of these trips, I think it's best to, to do it as early as possible. You know, and uh, something okay. else to mention is keep in mind when you are thinking about traveling to Ghana this year, the year of return is causing a lot of people, um, is driving traffic. So it not only is it, I mean, there's only so many flights that are going to come in during December, um, during, uh, during the, I'm sorry, during the New Year's Eve, um, portion of the year yeah and so and so you want to book early so that you can secure your space so that you can then buy your flight because once the flights are out the flights are out so you don't want to wait until the last minute to purchase um purchase a flight mm -hmm. yeah so I was, I was gonna say that um certified africa okay what we are trying to do is basically what we are so this african-american this is ghana we're trying to bring the two groups together. African, African, and African. So African -American. the diaspora and then Africa. We're yeah, trying to bring it together for business, for leisure, and then for, you know, culture, basically. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up because I don't want the Instagram live to just like end abruptly because I think it yes. only lasts exactly one hour. So um we talked a little bit about where people can catch you you all have some other ventures that are coming up that you're working on and i don't know if you're ready to share about them i know we've had some offline conversations so if you'd like to share any information about them then please feel free to do so so folks can see what else is coming up from you all yeah so i mean i feel like i'm the type of person who you know is super passionate about entrepreneurship, super passionate about ways that we as Black people can build generational wealth. And I think that mm -hmm. kind of ties into all of the themes of things that I've been involved with. You know, with us starting um, Certified Africa, it was a huge conversation of us. How do we build 
generational wealth? How do we teach other other people of the diaspora how to build generational wealth? How do we contribute and be, you know, and create a legacy? And so, um, you know, this year in August, at the end of August, early September, I will be starting um, my own law firm that is really focused and centered mm -hmm. around building generational wealth and how... Yeah, and so in, in, in estate planning, legacy building, you know, what is your legacy? What's your family um, legacy? A lot of times as, um, you know, as young people, we'll look back and we'll see our parents and we'll hear, okay, well, grandma, she, she passed away without a will or, you know, my parents don't want to talk about, you know, what they're going to pass on to me when they, when they pass away. And, and the mm -hmm. mindset that we have about those issues is what keeps us as black people from um, being able to build generational wealth. There Absolutely. is a huge racial wealth gap within America. And, you know, I want to be able to facilitate those conversations. Like we can have conversations about what does our family legacy look like? What are our family values? What's important to us? What do we want to pass on? And, and, and on top of that, you know, are we going to be able to pass on um, wealth, you know, because something that I, you know, as I research, something that I realized is mm -hmm. it only takes one generation to lose wealth. We as young Absolutely. entrepreneurs, black millennials, we may start a business today, but if you don't put the right um, parameters around to, to build and then protect with you what you've built, your kids may not be able to, um, to reap the benefits of that. So it's about building it, but then, you know, speaking to someone to help you protect um, what you've built and passing it on. That education that comes in with the family unit to protect the legacy of family and your kids and you know everything that yeah. we're fighting for. So. Yeah, let me yeah. just add something to what she's trying to do, which I think is very crucial. You see, black people, I mean, we take things for granted a lot. We don't take things seriously. We're, we're like, oh, okay, this is nothing. I mean, if I grow and I, and I die, I mean, they'll sort, my children will sort it out. And we leave a whole baggage behind when we are no more. You know, so now that we have the opportunity to be alive, I think what she's trying to do is not just to help people, but also to encourage them to, to try to know about these things. Absolutely. You know, when you go to a black person, you want to tell them about, you know, how you can be able to protect your, 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 your what do you call it, Tim? Your, your wealth, whatever you've created when you're no longer there. They're mm -hmm. kind of like, oh, I've got it covered. They, they just, they, they ignore you. We don't like to explore some of these avenues, you know, which is something that will help us. And our people, our friends on the other side, that's what they teach their children every day, you know, and always the gap keeps widening, but it's about time we, we, we kind of close, we close that, that gap, you know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we are about to, we have about one minute left, so okay. luckily they give you a reminder. So I want to thank both of you, Kristen and Benjamin, for chatting with me. This is my first yes, thank live. You too. Thank, thank you, for, Angel. Yes. Thank for you. Angel Mills Brand Strategy. I'll be talking to some more entrepreneurs and folks who are doing awesome things, young people, millennials who are just killing it. So I'm so glad that I can start this opportunity with such great friends. And yes. I plan to go on the December trip and I've been procrastinating booking. So I will be booking tonight. <laughs> so that, so, so that I can definitely be on this trip because I would yeah. hate to miss out. So again, if you all have any questions, you